couch Dogs, me, guitar lessons Hey there, Lickin' Riffers! Welcome to another awesome installment of the never-ending fingerstyle rhythm pattern exercise video series where we alternate every week between beginner, intermediate, and advanced fingerstyle lessons. This week it's time for another beginner lesson. So I took two pretty standard guitar riffs and turned them into seven different exercises for you to learn, to play, to improvise with, and enjoy. So um, the first exercise is the first riff. It goes like this. I'm pretty sure you've heard something like this before. Okay, um, this is a pretty standard riff. You put five and seven on strings four and five, five on the fourth, seven on the fifth, and you play it up and down the guitar. You play an arpeggio. This is an E minor chord. It's just a variation of E minor. And you play strings. Five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four. Okay, up and down the guitar. Don't forget, you play strings five and four using your thumb, the rest with your fingers. So, thumb, thumb, and then fingers. And the fourth string at the end there with your thumb. So, strings. Five, four, three, two, one, two, three, four. Then you do exactly the same thing, but instead of 5 and 7 on strings 4 and 5, you play 4 and 5 on strings 4 and 5. Now this, this is actually a pretty complex chord theory-wise. Um, it's D6 add 9 without a third, so it's neither a major or minor chord. It's a pretty strange chord when you think about it. But in context, it sounds good. So you do exactly the same thing. Strings 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. Then exactly the same thing, but with 2 and 3 instead of 4 and 5. So this is C major 7. So it's C, but you took your finger off of the second string. You get C major 7. So and then you play that D. Six add nine no third chord again. Let's just call it four and five. So seven five five and four three and two and then five and four again. So you get the first riff, the first exercise. Okay, and you can loop it around till you feel comfortable with it or board. So um, the second exercise is a variation on that. You play strings 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 2, 3. Instead of the fourth string, you play the fifth string again. So it sounds like this. Okay, so actually now you get a melody in the bass line. You get this. From three to five, you can also slide it. Okay, and then you get an extra embellishment. So, you can also slide uh, from five to seven, but you have to change the finger from the second finger to the third to get this position on. Um, but again, that's just an extra embellishment. You don't really have to do it yet. Just get comfortable with the second exercise first. We'll talk about improv at the end. Now for the third exercise. The third exercise is the second riff. The second riff is basically um, fret-wise, it's the same as the first, but on strings three and four. So you get these chords. Okay? Strange chords, but pretty nice when you play them like this. Okay? That's the next exercise. So it's five and seven, then uh, four and five, then two and three on strings three and four. So you have the first and second strings open instead of the first, second, and third strings open. So um, you play it like this. The rhythm pattern is this. Strings. Four. Okay. And then three, two, three. One, three, two, three. 
Again, four, three, two, three, one, three, two, three. Okay? And you play it straight eighths. Okay? Sounds like this. On the second chord, it sounds like this. Okay, now this has a unison in it. You have the open second string, which is a B note, and you have four on the third string, which is also a B note. It's the same B note, so you have a unison there, which sounds really nice when you play it in finger style one after another. Okay, you have the same note three times, but instead of sounding like this, it sounds like this. Okay, it's continuous. Um, so the third chord, and then, second chord again. So um, that's the second riff. So um, again, you can slide the bass notes if you want, but um, I suggest you wait with it until you feel completely comfortable and even a bit bored with the exercise. Now the fourth exercise. The fourth exercise is actually just the change in the chord. It's, um, it's a fretting hand exercise more than the picking hand exercise. Um, you do the first riff, but you use your pinky to add notes on the E string, the first string. For the first chord, you add seven on the E string, so now it sounds like this. Okay? And for the second chord, you add five on the E string, so now it sounds like this. For the third chord, you add three on the E string. Okay, so you get this. Now, um, for the, um, um, the fourth exercise, because uh, the addition is so minimal, uh, I also added notes on the second riff, but the notes are different. For the first chord of the second riff, the, the second riff meaning uh, strings one, two, three, and four. Okay, this, okay, this the strange chords. Okay, this one. Um, you add eight for the first chord. Okay, so it sounds like this. And then for the second chord, you add seven. For the third chord, you add five. Okay, so this creates an even nicer harmony. So if you uh, play the first uh, variation with the open E string first and then add the high notes, you have a continuous riff, a changing riff. You can also variate. You can play one chord with an open E string, the second chord with its additional note. Okay, so that's what I mean by taking this and improvising and taking this and making it your own. But let's wait with that and play the second riff. Eight, okay. Seven, five. So, um, when you play them together, it might not work that well, but it's a good exercise. And we're not done yet, remember? So, uh, the fifth exercise takes the additional notes and pulls it off, like this. Okay? So you play strings, five, four, three, two, one, and you pull off the finger off of the E string, you pull off your pinky to zero. Okay, and then you play strings two and then three. Okay, now where's the fourth string? It was there at the end. Um, this note, the open E string, the pull off, replaces the last note. Why? Because it's an extra note, and so the rest of the riff, strings two, three, and four, gets pushed forward by one eighth note and that means that the last note gets pushed out of the bar so it's lost All right and you do it with the rest of the chords okay and you can also do it with the second riff Okay, um, 
this is a really special harmony, um, in my opinion. So the sixth exercise takes the first riff, this one, okay, and adds two extra bass notes, like this. hear it? Okay, it's there. Okay, um, the secret to playing this is just uh, remembering to add two extra bass notes um, on strings two and one. You play strings five, four, three, then along with the second string you play the fourth string, so it sounds like this, okay, second string with the fourth, and then the fourth string, uh, sorry, the first string with the third string, and you play the third string with your thumb to get the thumb dynamic. Second string with fourth, First string with third. So you get this. Fourth, third. One more time. Fourth, third. And then, of course, strings two, three, and four to complete the riff. Four, three. Four, three. Four, three. Okay? Just um, calling out. The strings you add. Um, the seventh exercise, the last exercise, uh, would be to combine all of the additions into one riff, meaning this. Okay, could you hear it? Both bass notes and the pull off. Um, the rhythm pattern is the same as on the sixth. Um, exercise, but uh, there's something a bit different at the end. Remember, because you only play strings two and three, so remember that. Again, strings five, four, three, then the second string with the fourth, then the first with the third, and then the pull off, and then strings two and three. So, four, three, pull off, two, three. Slowly. exercise to be honest but I have absolute confidence in you I know you can do it uh, otherwise I wouldn't have shown you how to in this lesson um, now you can also take all these exercises and combine them you can play one chord with the note on the E string the next chord without the note on the E string and on the next chord you can pull the note off uh, you can play strings five and four instead of four and three when you add bass notes like this Okay, strings 5 and 4 instead of 4 and 3, that's also a variation. Okay, um, you can mix and match the rhythm patterns. Okay, take the second riff's rhythm pattern and put it on the first um, and see how that sounds and also change the notes on the E string, but I'll leave that up to you. In the meantime, you go practice this, but before you do, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and feel free to share this lesson with anyone you want. It's free, everything is for free. You can go download the tab from the website. The link is right below in the description. It's also for free. Everything is for free right here on Lick and Riff, but if you wanna give something back, there's a large blue donation button right above the tab and everything goes right back into these lessons, into Lick and Riff, into your own guitar education so if you want to help out i'd be more than grateful for any donation whatsoever so thank you and you go practice this uh, leave a comment tell me how it goes and i'll see you in the next lesson thank you very much for watching bye for now